is the new Netflix Junji Ito show that bad? It's okay. <coughs> I'm in Kansas City. <coughs> I'm sick as <coughs> All the flights back home got canceled due to some bad weather, so I'm just stuck. I'm sick, I'm stuck, life oh, no. sucks. But you know what? I remember today I thought to myself, oh wait, Netflix just released that new Junji Ito special. I wonder how it is. From the kings of animated horror themselves? Oops, Fars are? Remember Farzar? How about Chicago Party Ant? Big mouth. Huh? You remember any of those? Well, I thought, how bad could it be? To keep it short, it's like a 6.5 or a 7 out of 10. It's okay. If that's all you wanted out of this video, there's your short answer. Otherwise, we're probably gonna get into some spoiler stuff. So I will say, you know, it's okay. If you have some free time, might as well pop on a couple episodes here and there. But how does this show hold up to the Junji Ito collection that was released in 2018? I think it takes steps in the right direction, animation-wise, but once again, on so many levels, God, it falls flat. We're this close, I swear to you, to a beautiful, beautiful Junji Ito video adaptation, and I'm still praying that the Adult Swim Uzumaki version really covers that. But let's talk about the good and bad of this show and see if it's something that you might want to give a watch. See if you might want to dabble in it. <clears throat> I don't know if 7-Up has ever been proven to help. I'm pretty sure my 87-year-old grandma was just like, drink 7-Up, it'll make you feel better. It might be the lemon. But first, today's video is sponsored by Keeps. Keeps is a discreet online subscription service that brings hair care to your door. Look, it's gonna happen. Two thirds of men experience hair loss by the time they're 35. Yeah. The important thing is that you do something about it. And with Keeps, you get 24 seven support and a team of medical professionals backing you up. Their doctor recommended treatment plans are tailored for your specific needs. Most people see results within the first six months and best of all, Keeps delivers right to your door. Keep the hairline that you have and keep the symptoms of hair loss at bay. All from the comfort of your home. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of your hair you have, Keeps has you covered. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash papameat or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash papameat. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video and back to the video. I mean, I don't know, is that okay? I would feel like a rude host. Why don't I take you on a tour of my $70, $70 a night Airbnb in Kansas City, Missouri? This is a lovely little kitchen. Look at this, this is nice. I mean, it's like, look at this exposed beam. My little hipster cock is hard, rock hard right now. I'm like, exposed beams? Ugh. Jacking it, dude. Got some candles. I was trying to light them and be atmospheric and, you know, cinematic for you guys, because you know how I treat you. Not a goddamn match or lighter in the place, all right? You know I don't be smoking. This is awkwardly placed in the corner, but guess what? Genji Ito's from right there. The guy who we're talking about today. <clears throat> Japan, he's from Japan. In case you forgot where we were, it's just like, you know. This is the city you're in. I hate when people do that. It's like, I know where I'm at. If anything, it would just put the map up. I know how to spell Kansas City. You know, we're in Kansas City with barbecue, so we got them log hole curtain rods up there. It's two TVs. The same TV on each side. I don't want to watch Seinfeld. Well, I don't want to watch Bionicle the movie. Well, I'll watch it on this TV, you watch it on that TV. This is a room that they clearly built, or well, this wasn't meant to be a room, but it's still very big. Oh. I have to lay down, goddamn sinuses are clogged. If we're gonna talk about this shit, we should probably just talk about the weakest ones first, which is very odd. It starts off with their worst episode, and it's worst rated on IMDb, which I thought was kind of peculiar. They didn't even start with their strongest ones. It was called the Hikazuri Siblings. And it's just weird because in the show, this is a horror show. And I'm not saying that everyone's gonna be afraid of these Junji Ito stories, but that is the aesthetic, that is the storytelling that's happening. You're supposed to be generally spooked. <laughs> <gasps> That's your genuine reaction. And in this first episode, you have some of the weirdest dialogue and like back and forth, and they have like this fucking weird buffoon music. <laughs> and it just, it sets this tone for the season. That's just like, is this like a weird slapstick horror comedy show? If so, I had no idea this is what he did. This is awkward. But key word I said was buffoon music. And I think that's where I want to start off with the show. Complaint number one, which is the music. That is so bright. Ah, 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 ah. They have the alphabet, the phonetic alphabet in the bathroom. You know what screams? I have screaming diarrhea or I have to piss or bathe my naked fat body. The phonetic alphabet. 
The music is vitally important. Music is probably in video format. Audio is everything. Right. You could have the biggest piece of shit looking thing, but if the audio is good, 100% of people are gonna stay to watch that versus the beautiful thing that sounds terrible. Music is another language. So the theme song of the show, which is like a hip hop, kind of club music. Somewhere I'm like, I wanna, you know, I'm trying to grab up on a girl and start grinding. This is club music, goddamn. I'm trying to get my jam on. I'm trying to do one of these, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, hey. I'm trying to get one of those going. Is that a good precursor? for a show that's supposed to be scary? No, I feel like I wanna pop Molly and I wanna drink Bud Light till I throw up. That's the kind of show that I'm going into. So we have this theme song, which I don't know how much of it we can play without getting copyright stricken. Let's just play a little bit. They see me rolling. I mean, hopefully from that clip you can tell that it's uh, not a good match, but atmosphere is everything. Horror, as I've said before many times, horror is about atmosphere. If people feel like they're outside of that atmosphere, if they feel like they're not completely immersed into this universe. They're gonna be lost. They're not gonna care. They're not gonna get spooked. And the whole thing is gonna be a big sham. So even after, you, if you can get past the very, very odd hip hop music at the beginning, so many music choices in the show, they don't fit with the themes of the show at all. They kind of are just like, go on LimeWire. Sir, we don't have LimeWire anymore. I don't care, just go. And they just kind of randomly selected stock music that they just kind of threw in. And once again, some of these moments that could probably be pretty good are ruined by lackluster music that completely takes you out. It's awkward too and it's befuddling because sometimes the music works. Sometimes the music's pretty good. You have good atmospheric sounds. You have stuff that I'm like, I wish that was just the theme song. I wish that's what led us into the show and got me kind of strapped in and neck loosened, ready to go into the show and experience it and have a lot of fun. But no, it's like a weird chameleonaire kind of like, it kind of sounds like a chameleonaire song. I'm probably wrong, but I'm pretty sure there's like one chameleonaire song that sounds like the theme song. I don't know why. I might be misremembering, but shout out my boy chameleonaire, that shit's fine. The first six episodes, they end on kind of a lackluster note, but then the last six really aren't that bad, but all of them end on the same like jazz math rock song. It is the worst tension break ever. Usually an ending song or an ending credit sequence usually is a bit more subtle than the intro song because the intro is supposed to elevate you to an emotional level that you're trying to be at to watch the show. And then you have a nice cool down period with whatever happened in the episode at the end of the, the end song. Ooh, we let it sit. Oh, we let it sit for just a little bit. This song feels like I'm having a fucking panic attack, which could work, it seems like it should work, but it's so upbeat, it feels like someone's speed running a Mario level. That's the first thing I have in my mind. Somebody, he's like in their little rainbow form. And it's just guitar sweeps. It's very odd, the visuals going on don't match it either. You know, this is just subjective, it's just my opinion, but for me, it's just a huge miss. Complete and total way to not want to like move on into the next episode. Because that's essentially what Netflix is trying to do. They're trying to keep you on the app as long as possible. And as soon as I heard that first guitar sweep from that fucking math rock song, I was like, might be done, might be done. But I powered through, baby. I powered through. Nice bathroom though. This place is deceptively large. Big deep tub. I want to have one of those at my house, dude. Did I scare you? Another another full room. This is kind of creepy. I don't know about you, but when I go in Airbnbs and it's like a new place and it's like all, all the lights are shut off, it freaks me out. Makes me think of that one video. Remember that one that was like a really popular video of like the woman who was like supposedly up in that person's attic and she would crawl down at night to steal food. It's horrifying, it fucked me up. Anyways, back to the Junji Ito thing. <laughs> Boy. The next thing about the show that kind of sucks is the animation, which listen, it's not a huge budgeted anime show, so they have to do what they can. And I will say that they did take better steps than the 2018 adaptation, which in the 2018 adaptation, all they did was pretty much just take stills from the show, freeze frame them as a, remember this scene? Which was a horrible, egregious thing. It almost made the show not watchable. And this one, they do attempt to do some pretty nice animation but a lot of the keys are pretty sloppy. Animation can be kind of rough, but the biggest egregious thing in my opinion, and what I think is ruining the aesthetic of anime right now, it's gotta be the use of 3D in anime. Every instance. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh God damn. Almost every use of 3D in this show was just really lazy and a lot of the stuff could have been done with just 2D animation. One of the first things is in this ice cream shop or why ice cream truck episode, there's a moment when the ice cream truck is pulling away and they didn't even animate the car turning. They just put the anchor point at the top of the truck and they just moved the backside like this. It's really funny if you put an extreme tire screech on it because it kind of reads how it would actually sound. And what was really upsetting is in Hanging Balloons, which out of the whole series is probably my favorite concept. It's just so beautiful and dark and twisted and so simple, but it was probably the funniest episode by far that I watched. The whole thing, the pacing, everything, it read like a beautiful comedy. And there is a scene where these 3D heads were, oh my God, it's just, just do a looping animation of the head flying and the hair just kind of waves and that's it. It's like this fucking PS1 head flying down and this guy gets hanged and they're, the, 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 the balloon heads are moving kind of like this and that motherfucker is like ragdolling as hard as it can. Kind of like whenever you fly off a screen or something in GTA or whatever and the ragdoll physics go on. It is so absurd and so funny. I, I, I had to stop it. I was laughing so hard, especially just out of nowhere where they're trying to be all serious and then here comes this ragdoll. It's so funny. But then it's it's just weird because in the episode later on, um, there's a pretty funny scene where one of the girls is getting ready to be killed by the, well, their floating heads, you know? And a guy's like, hold on. And he goes and grabs a crossbow that he just has in his house and he shoots it. But it pierces a hole, the balloon goes down, you're like, oh, she's safe. But then her head gets a hole in it and she deflates. And it's actually a pretty fun frame by frame animation. And you see it being done and you're just like, why can't we do more of that? Even if it's not the smoothest thing, that looks so much better than all this 3D nonsense, dude. Especially when you watch the dub. Obviously, the uh, sub version, it's always better, shut up. But the dub version, watch it, because this episode is so funny. There's like, <laughs> there's a thousand floating heads outside and there's a news anchor guy and he's like, oh my God, oh my God, my head's coming towards me. It just looks just like me. That one looks like me. That's my own head and it's heading this way. He just like watches himself get hung. Just run away. Don't, why are you standing there? So many parts of this show, people are just like, I'm leaving. The dad later on the episode's like, I gotta go to work. There is tens of thousands of dead people hanging in the sky. I gotta go. I got a good corporate job nine to five. I have to go. It's a great comedy though. I'm, I'm taking notes for some nice, for some nice comedic beats and stuff. It's very nice. Another general complaint I had with it was the compositing feels really bad. It all feels very one dimensional, very flat. It kind of feels like the whole thing is filmed on an iPhone camera. Huh? Just like we're doing now. Boost up with a little bit of compositing. Maybe take that 3D budget, put that back in your pocket, maybe put it into some compositing next time. Some episodes were in four by three ratio as if it was 1996. I don't know why, four by three? So only some episodes were. But the most egregious thing, which I already said was a 3D, I'm still gonna put that at top. The second most egregious thing was they did an episode on his short story, Mold. And the whole thing was in black and white. And visually it was the strongest episode to date. And it pisses me off so much because it's like, dude, this whole show would have looked so much better if you just had it in black and white. I think it just hides a lot of the cheapness of a show. It already gives a natural atmosphere by being lifeless, soulless, despair, sadness. It's all these things that come with those color registers. It's what makes Frank Miller stuff so good. Those big, beautiful black shadows. He creates so much depth and atmosphere, it's amazing. And that's why Junji Ito's work is so good along with other, you know, Hideshi Hino, all kinds of other horror mangaka who that's all they have is the black and white but it settles in the atmosphere the dark dark fear aspect all that beautiful emotion that comes with the lack of color and i just wish to, i pray you know and i know it also is working on uzumaki but let them do something where every episode's in black and white and they take that creative risk because i know there's going to be a lot of people that are like oh black and white what is this show oh <laughs> People don't know what they want until they get it. Mold was fantastic looking. The ending was really rushed, but still great visual episode. But then on a good note, probably my favorite episode of the series would be Layers of Terror. Fantastic acting in the sub, great fun animation. <coughs> Frame by frame animation towards the end to give some really gruesome, brutal acting to this horrifying scene, really visually disgusting scene that's awesome. And it looks great. But as I was sitting there watching it, I couldn't help but think to myself, oh my God, if this was in black and white, it would hide some of the cheapness of the looks of this flat color. It would make all of, it would just, it would tie everything together. This thing 
would be phenomenal. It's a banger of an episode, but it just falls short a little bit because the shots look flat. The reveals, very odd timing for reveals. I mean, there's some moments where we get a big reveal that the mom has fucking six layers of teeth. It's like half a second long. Uh, what? That's like being like your mom coming in being like, I have teeth. And then she closes it and leaves. It's like, eh, excuse me? You know, like, could you say that one more time, please? Reel it in. And there's just other things where it's just static images with just zoom ins. It just feels lazy. Instead of doing simple, loopable animations that, you know, bloodshot eye here, twitching, or something that, in the grand scheme of things, really wouldn't cost you extra time or money, it's just filled in with a still with a zoom in. It's just a bit disheartening. And last but not least, another bedroom. It's very moody, dude. Like, this is a big Airbnb. 70 bucks a month. So, pff, I fucking wish. 70 bucks a night. If you're going to Kansas City, dude. Go. Go for like a weekend, spend like 300 bucks on a big ass apartment. Yeah, there's a fucking balcony, which I don't know how I feel about that. It goes straight to the street. Also, that's like a, a bar. It looks closed though. It, it doesn't look like there's anybody out here yet. You could just peek in and be like, oh, there's someone sleeping. I'm gonna break down this window and fucking kill them. You know what, actually don't stay here. Don't, don't stay here. This city is actually very unsafe too. Look it up. It's always in like the top five, always. I got mugged here and so did my friend. I hope you've enjoyed this Airbnb tour so far with all these beds. Something crucial that comes with converting still image media into moving media, motion picture media. The last and final complaint I'll give you is adaptation versus translation. What I mean by this is so far out of all of Junji Ito's work, we have gotten a translation. People take basically his manga, they bring it in and they're just like, well, this is what it is on the page, that's it. A comic is not the same as a cartoon, as an anime. You have to adapt what works on the page for what works on the screen. So a lot of these stories are told so incredibly straight from the book that the pacing and the timing does not work with the visuals. We need to adapt that format, that formula into something that really sells that pacing, sells the timing of everything. It makes the story so crucial while you're reading it. You linger on pages because of the visuals. You soak in all the beautiful details, right? You're not just rushing through and being like, wow, that was crazy. And you just shut the book cover and you're done. You linger, you see what's happening. You're checking out the environment. Visually, you have to do that too. Good music, tense atmospheric music, people kind of moving, set the scene, build your scene up and deliver on very simple premises sometimes. <laughs> One of the biggest problems in the adaptation versus translation was sometimes they tried to fit the shorter stories, two episodes in one, so two stories in one. Instead of letting a short story breathe longer and be its own standalone, we get these rushed micro stories that feel totally unsatisfying, unfulfilling to watch because it happens so quickly, everything is rushed to you so quickly that you have no moment to really sit down, resonate with it. You maybe get some good visuals here and there, but by the time it's over, you're just kind of like, oh, that was it. And that's kind of a shitty place to be in. As a creator, I've done this many times with my own work and it sucks. You don't always see it when it happens, but if you have a time and you have something like Netflix, to give you 22 minute long episodes. Use those 22 minutes to just tell a good story. And the first example is a thing that drifted ashore, which is just about this weird fish that's decaying on, the, on this beach and people are surrounded by it. But as the skin decays, you see that there's humans inside of it. And it splits open and the humans just kind of scurry and the guy's just like, they're acting like parasites and it ends. Instead of doing that, use 22 minutes to really like build the atmosphere of what is this fish? Ask that stupid question. <laughs> Ask the stupid question, who, what is this fish? Because it'll be so satisfying. Let people breathe in this atmosphere, this one setting. And I love it because it's just one setting on a beach. And it's not trying to take you across and try to, you know, go into the ocean and find out what these things are. It's the ambiguity. It's the reason why Lovecraft is so popular. It's just this thing that's from the unknown that we could never understand. But when you rush it, it's just like, oh, it's just a fish that ate some people. Cool, well, I don't know what it happened. That's weird. It must be a weird, crazy space fish. It just undersells it and it just sucks. Then there's this short story, Intruder, which I don't think it's really one of Junji Ito's strongest ones. It's like weird dimension hopping stuff. And imagine rushing the idea of dimension hopping and like time travel into like 10 minutes. And it's just like, by the way, boom, ending. And it just ends. It just ends with a guy. It it's so ambiguous and so rushed that it, it like pissed me off. I was like, why did you even include this? Just 
Make them longer. Fuck the intruder story. Don't even put that one in. Don't make it. Don't spend time on that story. You know, we got one of the unendurable labyrinth. Basically, some women are like walking around the forest and they get converted into a cult, which I thought was kind of cool. And they immediately follow this woman who's like, my brother's been here five years. I think they've killed him. And they're like, can we come with you to find him? Yeah, okay. They go down into this like labyrinth where what happens in this cold is people practice and they go down and starve themselves to death and they mummify. And we are given one scene of context where a girl has like weird social anxiety where she doesn't like when people look at her or they're they're judging her. The story just ends with all of the mummies just looking at her and she just screams. Usually when you do something like that, you want to end it with like, you see empty hallways to insinuate like, oh, they were left in there. They never made it out. But there's just so much shit left up in the air. It's like, I feel like I'm on chapter two and there's no end it's like opening up a book someone ripped out 80 percent of the pages and you're like okay well i hope i get to read the rest of that soon he's put it down because you're done and the last one which is also one of the funniest ones maybe not as funny as hanging balloon is up this one called bully where it's just about this young girl she basically assaults and commits crimes towards a child attacks by a dog tries drowning him fucking beats him with that stick she beats him with this stick and the bushes and you're like god damn and then it does a time skip and she's like talking to a man on a bench and she's just like i had done i had done bear my sins to you and he's like well i mean that's fine i mean you're a crazy bitch back then but who cares and she's like but i feel like i fell in love with him and the kid shows up and he's older and she's just like that's why i'm leaving you and i'm like okay so this is a soap opera now and the guy's like what why doesn't have anything else it just cuts to them years later he apparently got some pussy from his bully they have a kid who looks just like the kid that she bullied and he leaves her <laughs> which is kind of funny i mean, I, I mean he kind of got his you know <laughs> she leaves and the kid's just like hey mom i love you and she goes insane and she's like well i'm gonna bully you like your dad because i miss him so then she just bullies the shit out of her son and it kind of insinuates at the end that she kills him which it's like is that a punishment it kind of just seems like she gets her nut off to torturing children. So she probably just got what they want. Like they both kind of got what they want, I guess, in the ending. It's very odd. Use the stories to adapt it to a visual moving format that works, that has room to breathe, that gives scenes room to breathe. Even if something is a small panel in a book and seems like it's insignificant in a moving medium could be the most important part of building up a scene, building up a strong point, any kind of thing that could push the viewer forward being like, oh, this is why I'm watching this. <coughs> That's it. In conclusion, it's really not that bad. You should give it a watch. Like I said, 6.5 or 7 out of 10. You know, it's a passing grade. That's what I got in, you know, geometry when I was in high school. My mom was proud of that. I would say my top three episodes in order would be Layers of Terror, Tomb Town, and The Headless Statue. Layers of Terror, sure. You know, the music's a little wonky. There's some good music in there. Maybe they don't hold well on some shots. It's being kind of nitpicky, but you do get some good atmospheric stuff. You have a great ending, some decent animation. It's pretty solid. Tomb Town, fantastic premise. One of my favorite Junji Ito stories. Really the only big thing in that that I remember is there's just this horrible 3D rendition of a monster at the end. And it's just like so distracting that I was like, oh God, please, please never again. And the headless statue, pretty simple, but it's such a great idea for a like slasher serial killer thing that once again falls so short because it would have been so, so beautiful in black and white. So fucking awesome. So if you have time, you have a couple days off or you just want to pick a couple episodes to watch, maybe watch those, see if you want to give it a chance. But otherwise, I really hope that at some point we get a true black and white, atmosphere filled, beautifully horrid music filled Junji Ito adaptation that we can all go crazy over. Especially one that's not Uzumaki that's taking like nine years to make, but I'm sure it'll be awesome when it's done. So until next time. I don't know. I'm not going to watch this. I've, I watched the whole thing already. I'm not going to do it. You want to watch Big Mouth? <laughs> Dude, no. Chicago Party Ants. Chicago Party Ants. Okay. <laughs> Such a douchey way to end it.